My name is Caitlin Hawkins, and we're in Kitty Bitty, Newfoundland, sampling for our urban waterway project. Today, we're just outside of St. John's, Newfoundland, searching for plastic. So the point of this project is that we're testing to see if land-based plastics um, are making their way from land into our waterways and our rivers and then into the ocean. Plastics get into the water because the ocean is downhill from everything. And plastics are very strong, they're very durable, they're very light. And so even if they take 50 years, they'll end up going downhill in the ocean. We've discovered that what we thought was just a piece of rubber ended up actually being a, from a tire, from a car. Basically, it's getting um, worn down on roadways, and so this tire fragment is then washing into our rivers and making it eventually out into the ocean. For the researchers at CLEAR, how they conduct their research is just as important as what they research. So this is Lady, and it's our low-tech aquatic debris instrument. So it's a surface trawl that sits on the surface of the water and collects any debris that passes through it, um, including plastics. If you're a fancy scientist, the tool you would use is the Manta Trawl. That's $3,500, and it's really hard to use and really heavy, and you can't use it by yourself, and you need a really expensive boat to use it. We made the Lady Trawl, which uh, is about $500 and smaller, and you can make it with things you find in your garage. And then we did Baby Legs, which is about $8, made with soda pop bottles and, and baby tights, and like kids can use it. And it still collects data. It still collects valid data. Why is it so important to have a low-cost, low-tech tool? Well, plastic impacts different places and people in different ways. The team at CLEAR is particularly interested in northern regions. Easy to use, inexpensive tools help researchers and residents gather data in those communities. There are more plastics in the Arctic than there are down here in the water. And we've done research that shows that. The further north you go, the more plastics there are. There's a huge current in the Arctic that drives global currents, and it sort of sucks water north, for lack of a better way of describing it. And so plastics from the south are constantly being sucked into the Arctic, and the Arctic is becoming a major sink for plastics. They don't start there, but that's where the plastics are ending up, so it's a justice issue. For many here, more plastic in the ocean means more plastic in their food. When an animal eats plastic, it eats all the oily chemicals that have been hanging onto it, usually PCBs, plasticizers, pesticides. And so those things can move with plastics into the food web. For people who rely on wild and country food, rural folks, indigenous folks, northern folks, many of which overlap, it's a particularly difficult issue because even in those places, you're, you're depending on the food, but also you're eating more of the animal. Right? And the more of the animal you eat, the more likely you are that you're eating the plastics and their intended chemicals. Research has shown that these chemicals can cause all kinds of different health problems. So, what do we do about this? Sure, it helps if we reduce the use of plastic, but not everyone has that choice. Now if you go into a grocery store, I dare you to get milk in a glass container. You can only get milk in a piece of cardboard covered in plastic or in plastic. It's not really a choice. And so when you go into places, especially like the Arctic or the North, there's only one store with one milk or one cabbage, and you're taking whatever that's made out of. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the North, there's one grocery store with one sort of stuff. So if we're really going to prevent plastic pollution, we need to reduce plastic production. We need to make way for alternatives. So if you stop them from being produced en masse, you stop them from existing in the first place. So make less, especially in the disposable category. This brings us back to our low-tech tools. Tools that can help us keep plastics from our waters by figuring out what's in there and where it's coming from. 
it's important to test what's in our water so we can see what's making it to the ocean and see what pollution we're causing um, and finding the sources of these, this plastic pollution. Tools like Lady and Baby Likes can be used by anyone, anywhere. Everyone, every culture, every age group, every gender knows things because everybody's a researcher. Children are researchers. They learn about the world, they gather information systematically, they make theories about how the world works, they test them, and off they go. Though it may not be the same for everyone, plastic does affect us all. That means we all need to be part of the solution. We have more trans and gender minorities in our lab. We have indigenous folks, we have children, we have elders, we have community members that are scientists. If you're trying to break the mold, you need those folks.